Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father God, thanking you for another beautiful day, Father God, a new day that we have yet to see, Father God. We want to thank you in advance, Father God, for the works that you're going to do in this day, Father God. We know that you are mighty God, Father God. You never failed us, Father God. You say you never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. So we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Father God. Thank you for being in this place this morning, Father God. Thank you for meeting us here at BCC, Father God. Thank you for dwelling in the hearts and the minds, Father God, of each and every one in this place, Father God. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Lord. Oh God, we thank you, Father God, for this ministry, Father God. We thank you for the media, Father God. We thank you for the instrument players, Father God. We thank you for the praise and worship team, Father God. We thank you for the deacons, Father God. We thank you for the teachers, Father God. Continue to bless us, Father God. Continue to keep us, Father God. Oh, Father God, we come to you this morning, Father God, and leaning on your everlasting arms, Father God. Oh, Lord, and we just thank you, Father. Father God, we pray this morning, Father God, for those broken families this morning, Father God. Go into those broken families, Father God, and intermingle with them, Father God, and fix them, Father God, this morning. Bring them back close, Father God. Let them know that you still love them, Father God. Father God, we pray for those family members, Father God, who are unsaved, Father God, who are strayed away from the flock, Father God. We pray this morning, Father God, that you draw them back, Father God. Keep them close, Father God. Father God, keep them free from any hurt, harm, or danger, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just pray for those marriages, Father God, this morning. The broken marriages, Father God. Broken, the broken spouses, Father God. The unsaved spouses, Father God. We pray for them, Father God. 
fix the marriages, Father God. Touch them, Father God. Through the marriages, Father God. Fix the homes, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Lord. We come to you, Lord, because there is no other, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent to die on the cross, Father God. We thank you for that perfect, perfect sacrifice, Father God, for giving unto us, Father God, so we may live a life, Father God, and live it free, Father God, with the fear of persecution, Father God. We serve you, we honor you, and we love you, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for bringing our, our visionary back, Father God. We pray for Pastor Maxwell, Father God. We thank you for his safe travels to and from Texas, Father God. We thank you for allowing him that opportunity, Father God, to be poured into by such a powerful shepherd, Father God. We thank you for the wisdom that you've given him. We thank you for the opportunity that you gave him. We thank you for everything that you gave him that he will pour back into us, Father God. Continue, Father God, to keep him, Father God, wrapped in your arms, Father God, close to you, Father God. We thank you for him, Father God. Oh God, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. Father God, continue to be in this place throughout this service. And we love you, we honor you, and we give you praise. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, we do pray. Let all the saints say amen. Have your way.
rise among us. Let us rise.
God, you are awesome. God, we praise you today, God. Oh, God, we magnify you today, God. God, we thank you for everything that you are doing in our life, God. We thank you, God, for how you're molding us, shaping us, developing us in the name of Jesus. Oh, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. Hey, hey. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. Hey, hey. You are awesome. Hey, hey. You are awesome. Hey, hey. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. Nobody likes you, Lord. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome.
Feel me.
your hands as an act of worship unto God. We want God to fill us up with more of him. We want less of us, and we want more of him. Hallelujah. We want to be that willing vessel unto God that we can say that our storage is empty and we are available to him to use us however that he pleases. How many of you want God to be you up? Hallelujah. Bless your heart's crown this morning. Come on and sing with us. individually. Empty out everything that doesn't belong of you, God. Take it out today, God. Take out sin. Take out envy. Take out jealousy. Take out pride, God. Take out lust, God. Take out anger, God. Take out resentment. Take out depression. Take out sickness, God. And fill us with your joy. Fill us with your healing. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your kindness. Fill us with the fire of the Holy Ghost today, God. God, we love you, we honor you, we glorify you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody besides you. You are a great God, and we honor you, and we give your name praise, glory, and honor in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, everybody, all over this room, let's give God a big, gigantic praise. Come on, let's give him a big, gigantic praise, y'all. Listen, go and hug a few people real quick and let them know how grateful you are to see them on the day. Hug about a good seven people and squeeze them real good. excited and you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's we welcome you all of here to the house of the Lord. We say God bless you to you. You are, um, you are definitely in the presence of the Lord today. God is definitely here. Um, listen, I'm, I'm delighted to be here and 
be back in good warm weather and um, amongst God's people. Um, I know um, all the ladies that went to Diva Day make some noise. I know y'all. I know y'all had an incredible time. Y'all had an incredible time. I, I heard it was really, really good um, at Diva Day. I told y'all. I prophesied to y'all last week that you was gonna be blessed, and um, I, I knew you guys were having an awesome, extraordinary time. And I believe that God met y'all over there. I got a chance. Um, on my flight uh, from Dallas to Atlanta to catch a little bit of the service. And so um, it really seemed like God was moving in that place. And I know you ladies just it really enjoyed yourself and had a wonderful time in the Lord. Listen, I just got back for an extraordinary week with, with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Um, just an extraordinary time at Project Gideon. It was, it was really tremendous for my life. And it was really, really great. It was really, really awesome. And um, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I really, really was blessed um, for, for the time that I was with uh, Bishop Jakes. It was just, just an awesome, awesome time. Uh, me and, and with a number of other pastors um, who is age 40 and under, uh, Bishop took the time out to minister to us and just was an extraordinary, extraordinary opportunity. Um, I got the chance to spend a little bit of time with Bishop Jakes Wednesday night, uh, we had a little meet and greet at the Hard Rock Cafe, and um, had a little bit of time to spend with him, and he was gracious enough to um, to sit down and talk with us and, and, and minister to us, and um, I had a chance, and he said, he asked me, he said, well, tell me a little bit about your church, I told him a little bit about who we are, he said, well, give me your, email, uh, give me your, um, your church's website, he said, I might chime in from time to time, so Bishop Jakes, if you're watching, get ready, 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 get ready. Uh, but just an extraordinary time with Bishop Jakes, probably one of the um, most down-to-earth um, um, big-time preachers, if, if that is a phrase that there is. And again, he sat down and just really just had a wonderful, wonderful time with him. Um, had a chance to meet a lot of other pastors, Pastor Chris Hill uh, from the Potter's House in, in Denver. Um, just a great man um, as well, had some time to spend with him. Uh, then also, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Dr. Ivy Hilliard in Houston, had a chance to spend some time with his daughter, um, Irisha Hilliard, um, who is a phenomenal um, youth pastor and just, just a great, great, great minister um, in the word of God and uh, just, just had a chance to connect. One thing I'm learning um, that as a pastor, you cannot do it by yourself. You got to connect. You got to know how to connect and network with other people. So many pastors really don't really um, fulfill their purpose and God-given destiny because they, they're too independent. Uh, too independent, and a lot of them are too jealous. Uh, jealous of other preachers, jealous of other churches. Um, and jealousy, for the most part, a lot of times, especially in our African-American churches, have kept us from connecting with one another. And um, if there's anything that I, you know, I, I, have, I have none, I have no jealousy bone in my body. Um, I, I love connecting with other preachers and other pastors because we all have something to offer in the body of Christ. Whether, if you, if, whether if we have 50 members, 500, 5,000, or 50,000, we all have something to offer in the body of Christ. And so Project Gideon was a phenomenal time. Um, and then I, I, I felt like a little kid the other day um, I ran outside and found out it was snowing. I ran outside and found out it was snowing, and I was like a kid in the candy shop, y'all. My first time seeing snow in 22 years. Uh, who in here, you've never been in snow? You've never been in snow? Wow, wow, quite a bit of you. I, it, it was my first time since I was age seven that I had been in snow, and uh, I wouldn't have found out if I had to went to one of the restaurants in the hotel. I got to one of the restaurants in the hotel that had windows in it, and uh, I was ordering my food, and I was at the counter. I had my computer, and I had my iPad up there. And uh, I was talking to my wife, and I happened to turn around while I was talking to her and looked out the window. I said, oh, my God, it's snowing. <laughs> left my computer on the counter, left my iPad on the counter, ran out there like a little kid, jumping all in the snow and taking pictures and doing video. Just had a wonderful, wonderful time doing that, but um, I'm glad to be back in warm weather. Um, <laughs> and I'm telling you, I really am. Uh, I like the snow, but I can't stand in it too long. I, I can't be in it too long, but uh, just, uh, just a phenomenal time. So 
listen, um, again, um, just a great time. And then on my way back um, from, from Atlanta to Jacksonville, my connecting flight from Atlanta to Jacksonville, you know, sometimes God, he connects you with people you don't even know who you're being connected with. Spent some time talking to this dude for about 45 minutes on a plane. Got on the plane, and uh, generally when I get on the plane, I try to find out who I'm sitting beside to make sure I ain't sitting by a terrorist. I ask all kind of questions. I ask them what religion they are, what their name is, what country they're from, yada, yada, yada. So th that's, that's pretty much my protocol whenever I go and sit on a plane because I want to make sure I'm not sitting by Bin Laden when I get on an airline. But I got, I got in, and um, I did my, my regular protocol. I, I, sat, I sat beside this guy. I asked him who he was, and I introduced myself to him. He said his name was Ron, da or Ron Davis. I had no clue who he was. Uh, but he said it was Ron Davis, and so uh, we got to talking, and, you know, he, I found out, you know, he had a, a lot of passion in a little bit of time about black history and a lot of passion for younger kids. And so we got to talking and got to um, going back and forth with each other and me sharing ideas with him, me sharing some of my opinions and some of my um, inclinations on black history and some of the things I, I feel that's happening with our youth today. And, um, and so at the end of our conversation, when we're getting ready to descend and land in Jacksonville, um, I asked him, did he have any kids of his own? Um, because he sounds so passionate about kids and young people. And he said, well, I had, um, I had two kids, but one of mine got killed um, almost two years ago. And I still wasn't putting two and two together. And, and you know, and I followed the news like crazy. And, um, and so it clicked on me. And he said his name was Ron Davis, and his son had got killed two years ago. I said, this is Jordan Davis's dad. This is Jordan Davis, the, the young boy that got killed in Jacksonville because his music was too loud. How many of y'all know God makes no mistakes when he puts you by people and sits you by people? No such thing as luck. No such thing as just, just happenstance. But God orchestrates things, and so... I literally cried. I was like, oh my God, it is an honor to meet you. And so I prayed with him and shared with him. I said, listen, your son's death will not go in vain. I say, we will do our best to uphold the remembrance of your son and all injustices that are done to young men, especially young men of color. We will do our best to fight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are on your side. And I'm praying with you as a daddy that you will continue to be healed and whole in the mighty name of Jesus. So, so I, 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 um, he was coming back from University of Connecticut. He has spoke at their black history program up there. And so we've already connected. He's going to speak for our Black History Month next year. Um, 2016, he's going to come. He's going to come. And um, he's going to come and, and share some stuff with us and share um, just how he's dealing even with the death of his son. And he's just, just, just a phenomenal man. But I, I want you all to keep him in prayer. Um, just a great guy. And we texted a little bit last night when I got home. Um, but um, God is up to something, and, and all of you, God is going to orchestrate your life that you're going to run into the right people to help to fulfill your destiny. Amen? So I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. I want to share a, a few other things with you before we get into the word today. Um, after church today, of course, we are having a ushers and greeters and hospitality workshop. Uh, with all of all of those who work in that area, um, if you if you are an usher, um, your greeter, um, your work in hospitality, we're going to meet with you today after church. I'm just going to be for about 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to go over some great things. Uh, we got a lot of events coming up, and we want to make sure that we're all in the right place um, and doing what we need to do in that in that area. Um, if you desire to also, if you desire to serve in, as a greeter, as a usher, or in hospitality. Um, you need to be to this meeting too as well. Uh, we're going to meet back in the fellowship hall right after church. Amen, somebody. Also, um, tomorrow night for everyone who works in the media and sound, we are going to have a workshop with our media and sound team tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Um, so all of those who work back there in the media and the sound who does a phenomenal job, y'all give it up for our media and sound people. We're going to meet tomorrow at 7, and also as well, if you desire to work in, in that area and in that ministry, you need to be here tomorrow night too as well. Uh, we got a lot of great things going up, going on and coming up, and we want to make sure 
that we are prepared and ready for that as well. Also, this Wednesday night, there is no Bible study this Wednesday night. This week is um, Covenant Fellowship International, um, our spring conference, and we got some great, um, some great stuff going on at the Potter's House of Jacksonville with our bishop. And, um, and so um, some of us will be over there. I'm inviting you guys to come over to as well Wednesday night. Um, if, if it fits into your schedule, come on over. It's going to be a great, 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 great time of worship uh, with many different speakers from all around the country. A um, couple other things. Um, this um, next Sunday, rather, is our unity service. I am so excited about our unity service. A vision that God has given me. I want you to help me to spread the word about this service. It's going to be at 4 o'clock. We made it so that because uh, we put the word out and a lot of pastors shared with us. They said, well, our evening service is at 6 o'clock, so it conflicts when we have evening service. So what we did is we moved it up. We bumped it up to 4 o'clock so that nobody will have an excuse to say that, hey, they can't make it. They can't be here in church. So um, next week at 4 o'clock, help us to share the word about it. Just put it on your Facebook. Put it on your Twitter. Uh, put it on your, put, I got me an Instagram the other day, y'all. I'm really hip. I got me an Instagram. Go follow me at Pastor Maxwell on Instagram. Y'all make sure y'all do that. I'm real hip and into it now. Um, but put it on your Instagram too as well. Put it everywhere. Put it everywhere. And I found out Sister Betty got Instagram too. I say, I'm really behind. She been liking my pictures and stuff and the young people been telling me, Dorn and Quenisha, they've been saying, Pastor, you need to get an Instagram. And I'm like, man, I got enough grams. I don't need another one. And, uh, but I was kind of forced into it because um, on, when, on Wednesday night when I met Bishop Jakes, he shared with me, he said, well, hit me up on Instagram. So I had to instantly create me an Instagram account. And I said, well, Lord Jesus, if Bishop Jakes said hit me up on Instagram, I might as well create one. So, but but um, help us to share um, and get the word out about this service. Um, I know already it's a challenge for a lot of people, especially when you're talking about getting together, churches getting together. It's not easy um, because a lot of people have egos. A lot of people, a lot of people, you, you'd be surprised at some of the stuff that people have been asking me about, about the service um, because people are real picky when it comes to church. It's funny because nobody asks when they go to a football game, nobody asks what the band is playing. Nope, nobody asks what the band is playing, what kind of uniforms they got on, what they're going to be serving at the concession stand. But people will break their neck and park two miles from the stadium to get to a game. But it's, it's shocking to me the, the stuff that we will allow to divide us in the kingdom of God. Just simple stuff. You know, I, I shared that we're having communion and people was like, well, how are you going to do communion? And, and who's going to be serving it? Who's going to be invited? I said, well, just come on, man. They was like, well, what if, what if people of other religions and what if people of other faiths are there and this, that, and the other? And I got a revelation. I said, if Jesus can have communion with Judas, why can't you have communion with somebody who might not be of the same faith as you? I say, I know whose name we're going to be doing communion in and what we're going to be doing it for. But, but, but people are very divisive. But I come to the conclusion, we got to find things that will unite us and things that will not divide us. We have to get to that point. So help us to spread the word about that. Um, also, of course, you saw it on the screen, the Eddie James concert next Sunday. I'm sorry, two Sundays from today. It's going to be great. Um, March the 15th, 6 o'clock. Um, also, uh, we don't have it on there, but we're going to have D. King is going to be joining us for that service too as well. He's going to be opening up. D. King is going to be opening up the service. So listen, it's going to be a great, great time. I'm going to be sharing more about that service on next Sunday. And uh, we, we got to finalize all of our stuff with Eddie James on this week and with his team. So um, I'll be sharing more about that on next Sunday and all the stuff that will take place with that. Uh, one. Um, just a couple other things, and I promise you we're going to get into this message. Um, Lecrae, we, we put out there about the Lecrae concert um, that's going to take place on June the 20th. Everybody say June the 20th. Um, it's going to be at Wild Adventures, and so this is going to be a nice little church trip for us, a little church um, um, outing for us. It, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do something different. We're going to do a, a, something special. 
um, for the kids who um, are part of our church. For all of the kids, and I want y'all to make sure y'all 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 get this, so you know what what the um, what the special instructions are going to be. For all of the kids in our church who will be coming to Sunday school, we're going to pay for them to go to the concert for free. We're going to pay now. Now let me let you know the rules. How how this is going to take place? Look at your neighbor. And say there is some rules. There are some rules, and I shared this with our teachers on last week, uh, that I want to be a blessing to our young people um, as far as um, them who come to Sunday school. This is what, this is what it's going to be. Of course, there are some few rules. Um, it, it's for 12, 12th graders and under. If you're 12, yeah, all the old folks say all. Oh. It's for 12th graders and under. Now, let me give you the other rules. Kids must attend, attend at least three out of the four Sunday school classes from next Sunday to June 14th. You must attend at least three out of the four Sunday school classes a month. A month. Okay? A month. Between next Sunday and June 14th. Now, we're going to be taking roll. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to be taking roll. We're going to be taking roll. Now, um, someone had asked me, because there, I know there's all kind of special different um, situations with different kids in our church. If you if you are in a situation, if your kids are in a shared custody situation, you know, maybe if they, they go to their, um, um, another parent um, throughout the month, every other week, um, they have to attend at least two out of the four Sundays. At least two out of the four Sundays um, a month. Okay? So that's also as well. So keep that in mind. Um, um, also, they must be the Sunday school during the opening of Sunday school. Everybody say 930. You got to be here at the opening of Sunday school. When we, when we, when we have devotion, this is what we're going to be taking a picture. We're going to take a picture to know who's in here and who's not. All right? So, um, but you got to be here at the opening. 9.30. Let's say it again. Say 9.30. All right? So you got to be here at the opening of Sunday school. Another, another rule is, you, as a child, you must bring a physical Bible to church. Not your iPad, not your tablet, not your computer, not your phone. You must bring a physical Bible, one that you can touch, one, one that you can open and turn pages, and a real one. So you must bring a physical Bible to class, all right? And then the last thing is you must participate in class. All right, so y'all got that. Three out of the four Sundays, uh, if you are in a shared custody situation, two out of the four Sundays a month, um, you got to be here at the opening of Sunday school at 930. You must bring a physical Bible with you to class, and you must also participate in class. We've already bought, we've already bought 40, we've already bought 40 reserve tickets. That's at the front of, at, that's at the front of the stage. We've already bought them, so it's already out there for you. We, we've already bought them. Um, now, you know, we, we bought 40. I would love if we got, I would love if we got to buy 40 more. I would love if we got to buy 40 more. So um, keep that in mind. And then also, of course, of course, it goes without saying, but you got to be a member of this church. I know if you're watching, you probably say, well, what if I just come and I, and I just come and I just, you know, come to Sunday school and then on June 27th, I don't come back. That it's not going to work like that. So you got to be a member, of course. Uh, Sunday school is something you ought to be coming to anyway. Something you ought to be coming to anyway, but it's just another way of, of motivating our young people um, but we but we already got reserved tickets and, and all, all of that stuff taken care of. I, I do want to say, you know, and, and I, I mentioned a lot of different stuff, and we got, of course, all kind of sign-up sheets out there. Please, please help us. This is something, this is something I learned at Project Gideon. Something I, and, 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 and I, I'm going to put this on my wall. I'm going to, somewhere, I'm going I'm to put it up somewhere in my wall and, and paint it somewhere or something. I learned this from Bishop Jakes. He shared this with us in our private, in a, in a private setting with us. He said, people who are great know the difference between patience and procrastination. 
Some of you, you miss out on things because you procrastinate. And so as it pertains to like things like signing up, we want to be a great church. Please, let's not wait to the last minute to put our name down on stuff and decide if we want to go. Small people procrastinate. Great people have patience. And so uh, some great things we got going on with that. I'm, I, I know y'all already know about it. The van, we're excited about the van. You guys are great. Just awesome. Um, you know, just great, great opportunity. Um, it rides real good. And I'm, I'm happy about that. Glory to God, Jesus. Glory to God. Uh, listen, y'all ready for the word today? Are you ready for the word? Glory to God. Get your Bibles out, Numbers, the 13th chapter. Numbers 13, verses 1 through 3. And then we're going to look down at verse 21 through 33. And once you find Numbers 13, I am going to ask you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. I want to give a big shout out to Deacon Steve, who did an incredible job Wednesday night in my absence. It's a great job, sir. Great job. The two shepherds. I really wanted to buy you some Dallas Cowboys stuff, Deacon Steve, but my spirit wouldn't let me. fans out there everywhere in Dallas, Texas. My God. I was so ready to get away from them. Lord, God. To those of you, Bishop Jakes told me, to. T he, he said, those of you who are pastors and you got people coming, the pastors and leaders in Orlando, he said, tell your congregation to get ready. He said, tell them to get ready as those of you that's going to pastors and leaders, end of April, it's going to be a Holy Ghost hurricane going to hit that place. It's going to be great. All right. Numbers 13, verses 1 through 3. Let's read those verses out loud, and then we'll pause, and then we'll skip down to verse 21. Let's read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. All right, now skip down to verse 21. There's going to be a number of verses, but we, can, we got to kind of read all of them to really get a good understanding of what God's trying to say to us. All right, let's begin at verse 21 and we'll go all the way down to verse 33. Read, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman and Shishai and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch which one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, 
let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Amen. Amen. Verse 31 says this. It says, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They are stronger than we. We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. I want to talk to y'all today from this topic, the danger of being negative. I'm telling y'all, I done got infused with something this week. And one of the things that God has poured in my heart about the danger of being negative. Tell your neighbor, there is a danger in being negative. Look at somebody else and say, there is a danger in being negative. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you everything today. We have 10,000 tongues. We wouldn't be able to say thank you enough. We honor you in this place. We thank you so much for what you've done and what you're doing and even what you're going to do. God, we've gathered ourselves in here from all around this area to hear a word from you. Speak to us today as only you can. We'll forever give your name glory. We'll forever give your name honor. We'll forever give your name praise. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. The danger of being negative. I, um, I, when I was growing up and going to school, um, I was a big lover of math. Still am. Um, my son kind of has taken after me. Um, he loves math and loves doing numbers, and, and um, he loves that tremendously. Um, but I, again, by myself, I loved doing math when I was in school. And, um, but there was one part of math that... Um, I really didn't like, and sometimes I really had trouble with, is working with um, plus and minus signs and uh, doing addition and doing division and multiplication, particularly of numbers that had a negative sign on the front of them. Um, I, I wasn't a, a big fan of that, um, particularly because when I found out that when you would have a negative number in an equation, it would affect it in a negative way. Um, if you had a positive number and you had uh, a negative number that was added with it, um, that negative number was going to affect that positive number in some type of way. And one thing I learned is that as it is in the natural, the same way it is in the spiritual. When you um, have a negative mindset or when you're around negative people, I don't care how positive you are, it will affect you. It will affect you. And um, this particular passage of scripture that we've read, we're dealing with negative people. People with a negative mindset. People who caused a whole generation of people to not be able to go into the promised land because they listened to the report of 10 negative spies. I today wonder, what have you been missing out on in life because you've been listening to the report of negative people around you? Whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be coworkers, whether it be somebody in church, whether it be somebody in your neighborhood, whether it be somebody in your circle of friends, what is keeping you, who is keeping you from getting that all that God wants you to have? We want to try to expose that on today. 
Now, if you've been in church for any amount of time, you've heard the story of the 12 spies. You've heard the story of the 12 spies. There's, there's probably no real reason for me to get too in-depth into it, but uh, you've heard the story of the 12 spies. In this story, we're looking at the children of Israel. And while they're in Egypt, you got to understand that God had given them a promise that they was going to be or they was going to take the promised land. God gave them that promise while they were still in Egypt. And what we see here is they've been in the wilderness and now they're getting ready to go into the promised land. So this is what happens. Moses, who is the leader of the children of Israel, he sends one man from each tribe, 12 men, to go into the promised land to get a report and to bring it back to the people of God. Now, the reason he does this is because they need a vision of where they're going before they take the land. They need a vision of where they're going. Because it is so hard to take people into a certain place if you don't give them a vision of where you're trying to take them. It's so hard. It's so hard. It, it, it's, it's so hard. One of the things we did is when we got ready to build this building, a lot of you have been around a while, you remember is that we went around to different churches and buildings that was like this building. Uh, I remember we went and had church over in Faith Baptist Church one Wednesday night and um, because their, their edifice is very, very much similar to ours. And so we got in there, and, and I remember we, we went on a tour, and I would point out different things, and we were, we're going to do it like this. We're going to modify this. We're going to do this a little differently. We're going to do this like this. We're going to do this like that. And because one of the things I realized is that in order to be able to walk in something, you got to first be able to see it. You got to be able to first see, and, and, and that's so powerful. That's not just with ministry. That's in all areas of your life. You know, that's why it's good for you to get out and, and you know, I always say, you know, if, if, if you're looking to build a house in the future, you need to go to Parade of Homes. You need to go check out houses. You need to, you need to, you need to go check out other edifices. If, you, if, you, if you're wanting a new car, you need, you need to go to car dealerships and you need to go look in some cars and test drive them. You know, if you're trying to do something in life, you know, you need a vision of where you're trying to go. If, if, you're a, if you are a parent, you want your children to go to college, you need to take them on a campus. You can't, you can't just sit there and tell them, you need to go to college, you need to do this, you need to do that. Why don't you take them on a campus and let them be in that environment for about a good two or three hours and let them get a vision of where they're trying to go? You need a vision. You need a vision. That, walks in, that, that works in all areas of your life. All areas of your life. It works in health. It works in health. You know, if, if, if you have a certain vision for how you, how, how you want to be health-wise, you need a picture of where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do with your body. So, so, so you got to have a vision. And so this is the reason why Paul does this, because to be a partaker of the things that God has for you, you must get a vision of where you're going or you'll never get there. You must get a vision of where you're going or you'll never get there. I'm, 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 I already know that this, this message is going to be two weeks. I already know I'm going to have to give all y'all this some, some more of this next week. But, but, but if, if you, if you, if you want to go somewhere, you got to get a vision of where you're going. You got it. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. And so, and so Moses, he understood that. So, so Moses is faced with the dilemma that he cannot lead a group of people who can't see where he's trying to take them so he has to f find a select group of leaders to go and spy out this land. Now understand that when they crossed over to spy the land, that this was a unique time. The Bible says it was harvest time. Everybody say harvest time. The Bible says that it was harvest time. And it says that there was fruit everywhere. There was fruit everywhere. The grapes, the pomegranates, it, it was fruit everywhere. Now you got to understand, these people have been in a desert for 40 years. They've seen no fruit. They've seen no pomegranates. They've seen no grapes. The, they, they've seen none of that. But check this out. The grapes and the fruit represent to them the coming into the blessings and the promises of God and the types of grapes that they cut down is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Matter of fact, the Bible says that the grapes are so big that it takes two men to carry one cluster of grapes. Wow. It's, it's just a picture of, of, of God showing us just how big and how much he wants to bless you. 
So, so, so check this out. The Bible says they were, they, they were so huge it took two men to, to, to carry these grapes. Now, now check this out. There's two reasons why God sends them into Canaan, into the promised land. There's two reasons. Let, let, let me help you out with this one. First, the first reason God sends them into the land was to give them a foretaste. If you're writing notes, you want to write down foretaste. He does this, number one, to give them a foretaste. Everybody say foretaste. Now, after walking with God for some time, I've learned that God will sometimes give his people a foretaste of coming attractions. He gives us a foretaste. He, a, a glimpse of what he has for you in the future. He gives you a foretaste. And he expects for that foretaste to be so good that it caused you to go back and fight and do whatever you got to do to get the rest of whatever he has for you. I love going, I love going to the mall. I, I love parking in the food court. I love parking in the food court. I love parking in the food court and, dry, and walking through the food court because every time you go through the food court, there is always a lady standing right there with a foretaste. of an entree at an Asian restaurant. Now, why do they do that? Their, their purpose of doing that is that they want the foretaste to be so good that it will cause you to take out whatever money you got to take out of your pocket, walk up to the counter, and pay whatever you got to pay to get whatever entree that they have allowed you to foretaste on that plate. Mm, I don't know if y'all got that. That's the way it is with God. God will give you a glimpse of what he has for you in your future, but it's only a foretaste of what he wants to give you. See, see, he, he, God sends the, 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 the spies into the promised land to give them a foretaste, but then what he then does is sends them back into the desert. He gives them a foretaste of their future, but then he sends them back into their desert, sends them back into their reality. Isn't that like God? God will many times show you something in your future and then allow you to go back into your present situation. Go right back to your desert situation. But when he does that, he does that in such a way, he wants the foretaste to be so good that it will drive you and motivate you to do whatever you got to do and do whatever you got to do in your life to go back and get everything else that he's promised unto you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I love, I love the Living Bible uses the word sample <laughs> when it talks about the fruit that they brought from the land. So the first reason was foretaste. The second reason he sent them into the, the promised land to spy it out was perception. 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 How is it that 12 men can see the same thing and they all come back with a different perception. All because we perceive things differently. You remember from school, you, you remember from school the, 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 the water in the glass test. You remember from school the water in the glass test uh, where, where, the, where the teacher will have a um, glass sitting on the table and she would pour water in the glass to the halfway point. And then she would ask the question, is the glass half empty or is it half full? And there'll be all kind of hands that would go up. And so you will have people say, that is half full. And then you'll have another group of people in the room say, that is half empty. And it's, it's, it's a perception test because if you look at that glass and you see it as half empty, you will see a problem in every solution. But if you look at this glass and see it as half full, you will see a solution in every problem. See, God rarely uses the person who looks at this picture and says that it's half empty. Because it shows your perception, it might just be negative. And one thing I've learned after 20 years of preaching, 18 years of pastoring, 
is that God rarely uses people who are negative. He rarely uses people that are negative. He rarely uses people that have that mindset. How is it that 12 spies, 12, all 12 spies encountered the same country? They all saw the same countryside, saw the same people, saw the same fruit, but they all saw it differently and perceived it differently. How is it they saw the same facts but had a different interpretation? Joshua and Caleb, though, they trusted God's promise that he was going to take his people to the promised land. They had seen, here's the difference. They had seen him bring the plagues on Pharaoh. They had walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. They had followed the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. They had seen this miraculous provision of water from a rock of manna and of quail. But the other spies had seen all the things as well, but they didn't learn to trust God. They didn't learn to trust God. They were part of the Israeli whiners and complainers that kept complaining about different aspects of God's deliverance of Israel from Egypt. They was the ones that kept saying, why did you bring us out here to die? There's nothing here to eat. Why did you do this, Moses? Moses, we should be back in Egypt. Eating the leeks and the onions. It, was, it would have been better off if we would have been back in Egypt. See, but Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit. They said, we trust God to bring us into the promises. We trust God to bless us. We trust God to bring his miracles. We trust God to do the amazing in our life. They did not have a negative spirit, but they looked at it at half full and not half empty because God was going to use them in a great way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, the other ten men, they forgot about the grapes because all they could see was the giants. Here's the thing. We oftentimes exaggerate the size of our opponent. We exaggerate the size of our opponent. What happened was their observation of the land led, led to a negative interpretation. They said, we can't attack these people, which led to an exaggeration. They said that we're like grasshoppers, which led to a paralyzation. Just, let's just forget the whole thing and go back home. See, we often exaggerate the size of our opponent. We often exaggerate what we're going through. See, you got that next picture for me. Um, check this out. All of these men saw both things, grapes and giants. All of these men saw both things. Now, when you look at that picture, if, you're, if you are concentrating on the bottom picture, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Joshua and Caleb, they went, saw the giants, but they didn't allow the giants to blindfold them of the grapes that was over in the promised land. See, you got to be able to look at the giants that are in your life and say, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You've got to be able to look at the problems and the situations and what you're dealing with and, saying, I don't, and say, I don't care what giants are against me. You've got to be able to look at the giants and say, you know what? I don't care what giants are over here. I'm going to get my grapes. I'm going to get my grapes. You have got to make it up in your mind that the giants really don't matter. See, because what you got to understand, I don't care if the giants are 15 feet tall. You plus God equals the majority. See, if God is on your side, it doesn't matter what giants you got to face. It doesn't matter what giants you got to deal with. If God is on your side and he told you that the grapes belong to you, my sister, my brother, you need to make it up in your mind that you're going to go and get your grapes you're going to go and get what God has promised you. I can care less what giants are against me. If God be for me, who can be against me? He's more than the world that is against me. Am I preaching right in this place? How is it that the same scouts 
can see the same giants and the same grapes, but end up worlds apart because of our perception. Let me, let me read this story to you. I found this very interesting. A salesman was selling shoes. A salesman selling shoes was sent to a remote part of a country in Africa. When he arrived, he was dismayed because everyone went around barefooted. So he texted the company back that had sent him and said, quote, no prospect for sales. People don't wear shoes here. So later, the, own, the CEO of the company sent another salesman to the same remote area. And so he gets over there to the remote area in Africa, and he then, he as well, sends word back to the headquarters and says to them, great potential, people don't wear shoes here. I, I, I don't think y'all get it. I don't think you get it. Both men saw the same problem, but only one man saw something positive out of the problem. See, one man looked at it and, and said, okay, men don't wear shoes here. There's no way we can get any sales here. But another man looked at the same situation and said, you know what? People don't wear shoes here. This is a great way for us to sell shoes at. <laughs> Woo! I hate being around negative people. I want to tell you something right now, people of God. Can't people will keep you from your destiny. Do you not know for a believer, you need to write this down, the word can't is a cuss word. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can't is a cuss word for a believer. God doesn't work in can'ts. He works in cans. Let me, let me tell you a quick story. Let me tell you a quick story. Um, when I first started pastoring here, I heard everybody tell me there's no way you can build a successful church here in Lake Butler. No possible way. No possible way, especially a non-denominational church. When, when I got ready to start this church, I, I had people from, from the Baptist organization. I had people from Church of God by faith, people from Church of God in Christ. I, I had people from every denomination you could think of. I had one pastor telling me, he said, I can't wait till you become Kojic and then it's really, really going to take the church to another level. I had one joker tell me from a Baptist church that you need to join our jurisdiction. It's the only way your church is going to be successful. I mean, everybody, I had preachers from around, they would, they would tell me, they would tell me, this is a graveyard for churches. 18 years later. 18 years later, 18 years later, 18 years later, I've learned, I've learned to pay no attention to the cans and only listen to the cans. I don't want to be around people that tell me what I can't do. You need to make it up in your mind. You need to get away from can't do people. Why is it you want to go back to college? What, girl, I wouldn't be thinking about getting married if I was you. Buy a new house? What? Get a new car? What? Go into ministry? Preach? What? Man, bro, you, what, you crazy, man. Get another job? I want to tell you something. Those are the words and those are the people that you need to delete out of your iPhone, delete out of your Samsung, get off your Instagram, get off of your Facebook, get off of your Twitter, because they will keep you and can keep you from your destiny, but you need to make it up in your mind that you want to be around people that will encourage you and build you up and help you to get to your destiny and help you to get to where God wants you to be at. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all, the truth of the matter is that, the truth of the matter is that the giants didn't even matter. See, it's all in how you see it. 
See, the devil is trying to get you to perceive even the wrong things about yourself. The devil is trying to make you think you can't get up. He's trying to make you think you can't get out of debt. He's trying to make you think you can't get that promotion. It's all in how you see it. If you see your situation as impossible, it's impossible. If you see yourself as a crackhead, you're a crackhead. If you see yourself as jacked up, you're jacked up. But if you ever make it up in your mind, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You got to get your mind right. I done told y'all before, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you again, it is not what people call you. It is what you answer to. You've got to make up in your mind. I don't care what people say about you, what people think about you. You've got to make it up in your mind that you control your own destiny. And, and I done got too old now to worry about people's opinion of me. Can I tell y'all this? What people think about you is none of your business. Quit worrying about what people think about you. Quit worrying about people that's hating on you. I have never in a day in my life ever seen a hater doing better than the person that they hating on. I have never in my life seen somebody that's jealous of somebody that they doing better than. If you want to hate on me, that is just a prophecy that I'm doing better than you. I'm preaching in this place. They said, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. It's all in how you see yourself. It's all in how you see yourself. Quit being negative about you. You think you're ugly? You are ugly. I'm talking about ugly as, as the bottom of old frying pan. If you think that, you are ugly. But if you start looking in the mirror and say, I'm fine, it's all giddy out, I am just fearfully and wonderfully made. If you start saying that stuff about yourself, people be knocking on your door. People be trying to get to you like never before because it's all in how you see yourself. They say, we, we, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. When you study about grasshoppers, grasshoppers, they, they, they don't eat fruit. They don't eat grapes. So, so, so they, were, they were basically saying that, 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 that we see ourselves as ones who can never walk in this promise. It's all in how you see yourself. And the Bible said that a whole generation died in the wilderness because they listened to the majority of these ten people. That's why it's dangerous to vote in churches. Because many times the majority could be wrong. A whole generation missed out. And the body of Christ has been held up for years because the voice of these ten men had been going on far too long. All they was doing was praising their problems. They're like, ain't no way in the world. I mean, they was up there. They had the mic. They just giving their testimony. We went over there, Moses. We saw the giants. They, the sons of Anak are over there. Goliath's family reunion is all over there. We, we ain't no way in the world we can have that. And, 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 and Joshua and Caleb, they sitting over in the corner just listening to them. And, 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 and the other ten spot, they just going at it. They say, we can't have it. We can't do it. We can't achieve it. We can't get it. And Joshua and Caleb is over in the corner. And before before you know it, Caleb, he gets enough of it. He stands up, he takes his tie off and say, wait a minute, we are more than able to go over there and take over what God has given us. It is ours in Jesus' name. See, see, because 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 I'm, I'm about to finish, but, but let me let me tell let me tell you something. Let me, let, me, let me say something to you. Now, 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 you gotta get this. Joshua and Caleb knew that that property was theirs. They knew they wasn't trespassers. 
the giants were. The giants was trespassers on this property. They wasn't stealing the grapes. They belonged to them. The devil knows that the grapes belong to you too. That's why he's fighting you so hard. They're on your property, but the devil won't give up without a fight. Can I tell y'all something? This is just a quick commercial. I move from this real quickly. But can I tell y'all something? Somebody has something right now that belongs to you. Maybe some property, maybe a vehicle, maybe a house. Somebody got something belongs to you. God said, I give you vineyards you haven't planted, houses you haven't built. God says, I give you things you had nothing to do with. We got to understand the land was theirs. The land was theirs. Let me give you some points and I'm done. You got to get this. We talk about the danger of being negative. You got to learn to feed your faith and not your fears. Everybody say, feed your faith and not your fears. Say it again. Say, feed your faith and not your fears. Listen to what Numbers 13 and 32 says. It says, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. They spread, they spread abroad, and it's probably a little different from that. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched until the children of Israel, saying the land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we sought in, in it are men of great stature. You can actually rephrase this verse as saying they spread fears all around them. Have you ever noticed when you get around negative people, it becomes contagious? They start saying what you can't do, and then before you know it, the whole group of people, the whole group of people believe they can't do it. I've seen it, I've seen it in all that. I've seen it with I've seen it with teams. I've seen it with basketball teams. I've seen it, I've seen it with I've seen it with football teams. One person on the team gets intimidated by another player on the other team, and before you know it, the whole starting five is afraid of the other team. Because, because, because negativity and intimidation is very contagious. Very contagious. I used to wonder when I was a chaplain for the Gators, I used to wonder why we used to go um, on Friday nights, and we used, to, we used to stay in a secluded restaurant, a secluded hotel nobody knew about. There'd be no TVs. They, they wouldn't show. They wouldn't show college game day. They wouldn't show any of the predictions. They wouldn't. Coach Meyer wouldn't show any of that stuff. And I remember asking him why. Why is it? Why is it we're not watching games? Why is it we're not watching predictions? Because he said this. I don't want nobody to get the mindset that we can't win this game. Nobody. He said there's 105 people on this team, but he says all it takes is one person to believe we can't win and we'll lose the game. The same way it is in football, the same way it is in faith. See, if everybody in here be believes that we can overcome, everybody in here believes that we can be victorious, I want to tell you something. There is nothing that hell itself can stop us from doing. <laughs> nothing. But you got to feed your faith and not your fears. Quit listening to stuff that's, that's feeding fear inside of you and reading stuff that's feeding fear inside of you. I was watching something the other day, one news channel, and they was talking about something. I had to turn that in a New York split second. I said, I ain't listening to that. I'm not listening to that. Some of y'all, you listen to stuff and you watch stuff, and it just put all kind of fear into you. And then you come and talk to me, and you tell me about it, and then you wonder why I ain't paying attention to you. I got the gift of ignoring you. Then you get mad, pastor ain't talking today. No, I ain't listening to foolishness. You know, they say the world is warming up and, and the weather is this and that. The world about to end. I ain't listen to that junk. You know, you know, they say this about the gas prices and they say this about the eggs and the milk and this, that, and the other, and the job market and the house market, what's going on, the schools and our kids are all crazy and this, that, and the other. Yeah, you, uh, I ain't listening to that. Whose report is you going to believe? 
I shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm free. His report says I'm healed. His report says that I am victorious. I got I to I gotta finish this and, and then I'm done. I got it because y'all ain't hearing a thing I'm saying. You ain't hearing a thing I'm saying. I showed that picture of me in the snow and y'all ain't got, y'all ain't got right yet. Let me close with this. The danger of having, the danger of having a negative mindset. There's the theory of the bumblebee. The theory of the bumblebee. Um, scientific theories, according to the theory even of aerodynamics, as demonstrated in wind tunnels, and wind tests, do you not know a bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly? Look at his body. Look, look how obese that body is. And then look at how small the wings are. Because of the size, the weight, the shape of his body in relationship to the total wing spread flying is scientifically impossible for a bumblebee. Scientifically impossible for a bumblebee. But, however, bumblebees are ignorant of scientific theory because bumblebees can't hear well. And because they can't hear well, they don't pay attention to people telling them that they shouldn't be able to fly. See, if people never told us certain things were impossible, if people, would, if people wouldn't have told us certain things would, wouldn't be impossible, we would go right ahead and do them anyhow. See, there's some stuff if people wouldn't have never told you you couldn't do it, people wouldn't have never told you you couldn't achieve it, you would have been able to go and do it. You would have went able and you would have went and achieved it. I want to prophesy to somebody right now and tell you it doesn't matter what people tell you you can or can't do. I am here to let you know today that you are you 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 override scientific theories. You override scientific theories. You are able to do more than what you even think you are able to do. See, you got, see, you know what we need today, y'all? This might sound strange, strange. This might sound crazy. We need the anointing of a bumblebee. Where we're able to do something that looks totally impossible. And every time somebody comes and tells you something that you can't do, you just need to start buzzing. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't have that. You can't go there. There is no way in the world God can do that in your life. We need to get the anointing of the bumblebee and say, even though it may look impossible to you because God is on my side, God is in my life, there is no way in the world that I can be kept from doing it. I wish somebody give God praise right now because you know and you believe that you can do whatever it is God has called you to do. I want to tell you this. You know what you might need to do? You might need to get away from negative people. Can I tell you something about negative people? God showed me this on the plane on the way from Dallas. Negative people don't even know they're negative. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? People who are negative, they don't even know they're negative. You can try to correct them and they think you're crazy. They'll justify their negativity. They'll cuss you out. They will go off on you because they don't know they're negative because they've been surrounded by negativity all their life. They don't even know they're negative. And, and you can't correct somebody who has a mindset of a negative, a negative thinking. God had to let those 10 negative people die in the wilderness. He couldn't correct them. 
He couldn't fix them. He said, there's only two people. Go it, you, the men from the Sunday school class, you know exactly what I'm talking about. G, G, God said, there's only two people that's going in, Joshua and Caleb. The rest of these negative jokers, they're going to die. The hell with them. They're going to they die. Because you can't correct negative people because they don't even know they're negative. There's a danger in being negative. A danger. A danger. It can keep you. Just imagine if I would have listened to the preacher while we was we was putting up, I remember to this day, we were, we were putting putting up the, the, the red beams in this building. He stopped by and asked me, what are you doing? You are crazy. This building is too big. I looked at him and said, it ain't big enough. <laughs> Imagine if Martin Luther King would have listened to the people that told him nonviolence wouldn't work. Imagine if Harriet Tubman would have listened, would have listened to the people that said, you know, trying to get those slaves to, to freedom, it, it's gonna be crazy. You can't do it. I read, I read, I read, I read somewhere and I, I've been brushing up on my black history. I read somewhere about Harriet Tubman, the, the, the one who, who did the Underground Railroad. I read where, where, where she said, she said, I could have freed more slaves if I could have convinced them that they were slaves. She said, I could have freed more slaves if when I went to them, I could have convinced them to help them realize you're slaves. It, 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 imagine, Im, imagine if, 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 if if all of the other people, imagine, imagine if all the people who, who, who told him what they can't do. Imagine Michael Jordan when he didn't make the JV team. Imagine if he would have listened to the people that told him he couldn't play, ever play varsity. Imagine if he never would have tried. Imagine. Imagine. But they got the face of a bumble. I said, even though it looks impossible, I can do it. I want to tell you something. All it took was two, Joshua and Caleb, and they helped to change the world and to turn it upside down. We got two pluses. I'm telling you something. Let's not be negative. Let's have a can-do mindset. And let's believe God for what we can do. Come on, give God praise right there. Give God praise right there. Give God praise right there. Come on, give God praise right there. The danger. The danger. The danger. I need everyone to stand to your feet. I want to pray. Shift is coming. 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 We believe it, Lord. Shift is it's coming. It's coming. Father, in this room, I pray, and I come against every negative attitude, every negative mindset, every can't do and can't have and can't achieve mindset. God, you have greatness over our lives. There's greatness you have predestined for us. There's greatness you've laid out for us. And I believe today, God, that there's greatness you're going to bring out of us. I thank you now for dreams that's going to be accomplished and dreams going to be fulfilled. Mm. 
Doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter what people do. If you told us, you tell us that we can have something, my God, we can have it. If you told us we can walk in something, my God, we can walk in it. Doesn't matter where we live, doesn't matter where we're born, doesn't matter where we're brought up, doesn't matter the color of our skin, doesn't matter of our education, doesn't matter how much money we got in our bank account, doesn't matter who we're married to, doesn't matter what our last name is, doesn't matter how many degrees we got. God, if you told us we can have it, we can have it. God, help us to feed our faith and not our fears. Help us to pay attention to the voice of the can versus the voice of the cans. We love you today. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give your name praise. In Jesus' name. Listen, real quick, I want to do this. This, If this word is has ministered to you I I want to I want to this is a different kind of altar call I want people who believe that there's greatness on the inside of you and you you, you kind of feel like that bumblebee that there's nothing impossible for you that even though it looks like you can't fly God's going to cause you to fly I want to pray for people today I, I want to call people to this altar who believe that there's greatness in your future. I want you to come to this altar. I want to pray for you. I want to lay hands on you. I want to. I want to prophesy over you today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The shift is coming. 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 We believe in Lord, 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 we believe in Lord. We cancel every demonic assignment, particularly in our mind. Every thought process that's been telling us that we can't, we cancel it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We erase even experiences from the past that is trying to convince us that because of our past, we can't have a future. God, that's not your will for our lives. You've given us great promises, God. We want to walk in them. We want to do what you've called us to do. I need you, everyone at this altar, if you, if, you, now if, you, if you just came up here because somebody dragged you up here and you just didn't want to be standing out there in the seats by yourself, if you really want to be up here, I need you to lift your hands. Now, if you don't want to be up here, you are more than free to go back to your seat. You are more than free to walk away from, from this moment. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray I want to pray that you'll walk in everything that God has predestined for your life. I'm telling you you are, there's greatness on the inside of you many of you that's why the enemy fights you so hard. Physically, mentally, spiritually, he fights you so hard. Many of you he tries to confuse you. Many of you, he tries to go to the step of depression and, and, and causes you to be suicide. The devil knows what's inside of you. But today, we cancel his assignment. We cancel his assignment. I, I pray you start looking at yourself in the right way. I pray you start believing the right things about your life. I pray you start looking at yourself in a positive mindset. I pray that you start believing the word of God over your life. I pray that you start sensing that God's hand is all over you. I pray that you start sensing that there's a prophetic move in your life. That's the reason why you didn't die in the hospital. That's the reason why you didn't die in the crib. That's the reason why you didn't die in the car wreck. That's the reason why cancer hasn't taken you. I believe that God, God's hand is over your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Quit listening to the enemy. Quit listening to the devil. Your ending shall be great. Your better days are yet ahead of you. The best is yet to come. Those are not just cliches. That's the word of God over your life. God is going to bless you spiritually. God is going to bless you financially. God is going to bless you in your relationships. God is going to bless you in your children. God is going to bless you on your job. God is going to bless you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell all of you something. I, I hear the Holy Ghost speaking a lot of stuff to me. A lot of stuff to me, and, and I, I want to make sure I, I, I echo everything he's saying. God said also to tell you this. You heard, you heard me say, God said, don't pay attention to people who tell you what you can't do. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's a gimme. Now here's the flip side of that. The Holy Spirit said this too as well. You can't be one of those people telling people what they can't do. See, people always shout, they always dance, they always jump about when, when I say stuff like, you know, quit listening to the haters. But, but you never hear nobody stand up and say they're a hater. Because, because if somebody's hating on you, somebody's got to be hating. God says, don't you dare be one. You need to be an encourager. For your children, you need to start telling them what they can do. For people in your family, you need to start encouraging people in your church. You need to start encouraging people around you. You need to start being the one telling them what they can have, what they can achieve, what they can get in their life. Glory to God. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. The Holy Spirit is in this place. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in this church. I thank you for what you're doing in this ministry. Thank you for what you're doing all around us. We receive your anointing now. We receive your blessing over our life, God. We thank you for the grapes you got in store for us, God. We thank you for the promises that you've got laid out for us, God. We love you right now, God. We give your name glory. We give your name praise. And God, we won't have a negative attitude. We won't walk in negativity. God, and for those of us, God, who are oblivious to knowing that we are negative, God, I pray that a supernatural deliverance takes place in our spirit. Do it, God. Do it, God. Give us the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. Do it, God. God, we'll give your name glory. We'll give your name honor. We'll give your name praise. In Jesus' matchless name, we do pray. Amen. Come on, give God a thunderous praise all over this altar. Come on, give God a thunderous praise. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Now do this. Before we go back to our seat, I want you to hug at least five people and tell them you can do this. Hug five people and tell them, whisper and tell them, and tell them you can do this. You can do this. We're not going to be negative. You can do this. Whatever you're dealing with, the giants don't even matter. The giants don't even matter. Go get your grapes. Go get your grapes. Go get your grapes. Go get your grapes. Woo! Go get your grapes. Go get your grapes. Go get your grapes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Come on, high five three people and tell them, go get your grace. Go get your grace. Come on, tell somebody, go get your grace.
Come on, go get your grace. Go get your grace. Come on, go get your grace. Go get them. Come on, shift is coming. Come on, let's sing that a few times. The shift. children's church too as well um, and, and get that building situated and taken care of and get that functioning right um, some audio and, and visual stuff in there so doing that too as well and um, all kind of other things going on. I want to say a special thank you too to as well many of you have been, been get, still giving backpacks and, and, and you've been going out and buying backpacks and sewing them into the ministry for us to be prepared at the end of the year to do a big backpack drive thank you so much um, I want to encourage y'all to continue to do that. You run into some nice backpacks that not as not expensive. You like to sew them um, into some young child's life. Um, bring them to the church. We'll put them in their proper place. And um, in, in the months to come, we'll start filling them up with all kind of goodies and all kind of stuff. We're going to do it at the end of the year. And um, our goal, um, we, we want to do about at least 100 backpacks. I'm not exactly sure what number we're at right now, but we want to do about 100 backpacks. Uh, be a blessing to many kids in our area. Uh, maybe we'll get 200 in. That'd be great too as well. Uh, we want to be a blessing to as many young people as we possibly can. I believe any blessed church ought to be a giving church. Any blessed church ought to be a giving church, and we want to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. So listen, let's stand to our feet. We're going to sow. We're going to give. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to give, this opportunity to sow, and 
to be a blessing to the house of God and the kingdom of God and the people of God. Uh, thank you so much for giving us seed to be able to sow. And I pray, God, that you give us a 100-fold blessing back in return in Jesus' name. Let's lift our offering to the Lord. We're going to make our declaration with this seed. You shall meet all of my needs. My giving is an act of my worship, my obedience, and my love to God. You shall use this seed to reach this community, this city, this county, this state, this country, and this world. Today I decree every curse on my family is broken, every spell on my family is stopped, every disease on my family is healed because of the seed that I sow. Today I declare that I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord with a happy heart, y'all. Here we go, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold, that poverty must be, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold, sickness and poverty will see. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Blessed, 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 blessed. Amen. Hey, make sure you give somebody a hug and let them know you love them today, y'all. 